Hey everybody, Dave here, and welcome back to the Frugal Sportsman. You know, last fall I had the opportunity to travel in Minnesota with my good friend John and to hang out with his brother and also my good friend Don. And together we did some fishing over the course of a week or so. And one of the places we visited was Lake Winnebagoshish. We actually spent a couple of days there, spent some time at a cabin, and hit the water. And today's video is about what we found there. Not only how we found and located the fish, but we're going to show you today the techniques we used and show you those locations as well. So that if you're fishing that area, you might be able to get on them as well. So with that out of the way, let's jump into a little bit of the intro of how we got there and then let's get fishing. John picked us up at the airport. We traveled north to his place, but before we got there, we decided to stop at Cabela's, which was on the way, and get our fishing licenses. The Outdoorsman's Play Store. What more can I say? This is the cabin we'd be staying at while we were at the Pine Resort. And this is Don's 19-foot sea nymph, which is a perfect boat for fishing areas like the Great Lakes and a lot of Minnesota. The accommodations there were more than adequate. There was uh, nice bedrooms, a living area, a kitchen where you could make your catch or make a meal. And they also had a fish house where you can clean your fish, a really nice fish area. Um, they have bait, they have ice, other amenities. And they also have a fuel tank if you need to fill up your boat, if you're so inclined. All in all, it was uh, a great place and it met our needs perfectly. As you can see, the resort is located right on the lake. It has its own boat launch for convenience, 
And there again is a fuel tank if you need to fill up. But fishing is right literally at your back door. As you can see in the video, the water was very low that year uh, due to uh, a lack of rain. And as you'll see later in the video, the water level is actually supposed to be just slightly lower than the walking area on the dock. So it's down probably three or four feet. But that still didn't stop us from catching fish. Before we get into the fishing, let me give you an overview of the lake. This is where the Pine Resort was located, right here in this lower section of the lake. And that had a boat ramp, which was really convenient for us. But there were two other boat ramps located on the lake, one on the southern section and one all the way up by the, the northern portion of the river. The area we focused on, because we didn't have a lot of time at night, was right in front of the, the area by the resort. But the following day, after talking to some guys, we really found where the jumbo perch were. And that is up by the river mouth. There was also a walleye we connected with up there uh, as well by the reeds and in the channel. And we also connected with some walleye down off of the point, about halfway down the lake on the northwest side. That's where the water should be. It should be four inches below these posts. All right, shove us off, Captain. Here we go. I don't care. I don't know where I'm going, but... Is there any place you're halfway there, you're on the water. <laughs> Is there any place to fish in here? Um, well, bass along the reeds, right down the center from these buoys, straight on out. You can catch some crappie, pike in there, maybe a few walleye. Beautiful. Well, oh, that's sunset. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Because we got there late, we didn't get out on the water till late in the afternoon. And so it was a little difficult to start finding the fish. But Don did happen to get into a nice crappie about 15 inches uh, right before dark. And uh, we made oh, sure we awesome. took him home to be part of that's our what, fish fry. Oh, at least, yeah, that's a slab. Beautiful. Early the next day, we headed up to the mouth of the river uh, in order to get into some jumbo perch. The water was low and there was a lot of submerged structure that was actually just below the surface or just at the surface. One log was actually sticking up or stump, I should say. And we tended to fish the areas where there we found some uh, cabbage in the water. Uh, if you're from Minnesota, you know what that looks like. It's a long leafy uh, stems uh, that stick up and the fish really seem to congregate around that. The perch were very uh, cooperative for us in this area. Uh, what we did was we trolled slowly, maybe one mile an hour, and we noticed that whenever uh, we were getting ready to change direction, 
when one line slowed down, it was in the water, and the other one sped up, that's when we got most of the hits. The perch were a really good size. We caught a lot, we threw a lot back. We only kept the ones that were in the 10 to 12 inch range. Um, they were big and meaty and fatty, and uh, we made uh, really good use of them uh, for our annual fish fry. So you get it on, yeah. Cool. Twister tail, huh? As you can see, John caught one nice northern to add to our collection, and we each limited out with perch. There's also one nice walleye we caught in there as well for the first day. Lots of fillets to do. Well, we're right exactly where we were. I've been getting snagged on it. In catching the perch, we found out that jig heads tipped with a minnow, live bait, seemed to work the best. We also caught them on worms, I believe, but the minnows seemed to outperform everything. The hot color seemed to be pink, and we used jig heads in the size anywhere from 3 32nd up to about a quarter inch. Again, we trolled them behind the boat, and trolling seemed to outproduce most everything else as far as casting and retrieving. In the walleye, they seemed to kind of shy away from the minnows. We did catch a few on minnows, but the hot ticket for them was a chartreuse with white gulp tipped on a jig head with another um, chartreuse color for the jig head. And Don was able to pick up like four of those in a very short time using that combo. have been coated with a neck lanyard really made easy work of steering the boat in and around the stumps and the underwater cabbage and then it was just a matter once we located the fish they just go back and forth across our tracks shown to us on the fish finder using the GPS that kept us on the fish and kept producing all day long
to that, public access is for the river. Oh, maybe. As you can see from our second day catch, we were still able to stay on the fish and we caught some really nice jumbo sized perch to add to the fish fry. Stand over here, Don, I get you in there. Lots of filleting to do here, boys. Cool. Hey guys, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. And if you got something out of this video, which I hope you did, I really encourage you to give us a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to our channel. We've got a lot more coming your way. And if you do, make sure you hit that notification bell and check all so that you'll be up to date on all the videos as soon as they get posted so you can watch them. You know, being a successful fisherman is all about finding the fish. You know, we had a little rocky start fishing up at Lake Winnebagoshis in the beginning. But we were, we were diligent in pursuing where the fish were. We were willing to try different things and look different places. And when we found them, we became successful. You know, for most of us in our life, it's all about seeking. But for many of us, we're seeking the wrong thing. We're going in the wrong direction. You know, we go after the things that we think are going to bring us happiness and joy and all that. But in the end, they really don't. You know, we look at God so often as something that doesn't belong in our life. Look at him as someone who's going to boss us around, tell us what to do, kill our fun, kill our joy. But nothing could be farther from the truth. God loves you and he loves me so much that he was willing to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place so that you and I could have a relationship with him and spend all eternity with him in heaven. See, most of us have this idea that we're gonna to go to heaven regardless. That we're good enough on our own, and that, you know, I'm not a murderer, or I'm not having stolen money from a bank, but you know what? We don't have to do those things in order to be sinful. See, God's holy and perfect, and there's only two people that go to heaven, perfect people and forgiven people. Now, I know you aren't perfect because I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. That only leaves forgiven people. So the question is, are you forgiven? Now, you might be saying, why do I need to be forgiven of, Dave? Well, the fact of it is, you and I are sinful. When we weigh our life against the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, and that includes lusting after someone in our mind. Don't use God's name in vain honor your mother and father. When we look at just some of those things, we're guilty. We're liars, we're thieves, we're adulterers at heart, we're blasphemers against God. And you know, someday you and I are going to stand before Him and we have to give an account. And what are we going to say? Well, I, I thought I was good enough, God. I thought I was good enough. You know, when you and I develop a godly sorrow that says, God, I'm really sorry for the things I've done uh, and I, I want you in my life. I want to receive Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for my sin. I'm asking your forgiveness. I'm, and I'm receiving what Christ did on the cross to buy me back to a relationship with you. When we truly do that in our heart and sincere, God forgives us. He loves us that much. that He was willing to send Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us in our place so that you and I could go to heaven. But we have to say it with a sincere heart. We have to come before God in a sorrowful way and truly be sorry for our sins. When we do that, God opens His arms and He opens the door so that you and I can be forgiven, so we can have a relationship with Him, we can live all eternity in heaven. Not because of what we did, but because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. 
So today, I don't know where you stand, but you know what? Life isn't always about seeking fish. It's about seeking other things. And the other thing I'm talking about is God. If you've never really made God a serious prospect in your life to seek after, I'd ask you to just take the time to think about that today. You know, God wants so much to have a relationship with you. And you know, if you're not sure how to go about having that relationship, how you can commit your heart to Christ, well, I've written a free book. It's very short. But in it, I share with you a little bit about my life. I share with you more importantly about the scriptures, how God changed my life and my heart as a young person, and how I've been walking with him ever since, and how I know I have eternal life, not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. The book's called Growing Deep. It's in the description below. All you got to do is click on it. You can start reading. It doesn't require your email or anything else to capture. But God wants so much to change your life if you're willing to let him. God wants so much to show you why you were created in your purpose. And that purpose is found in Him and Him alone. So today I'd really encourage you to seek after Him instead of pursuing all the things that you think are going to bring you happiness, but don't. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. I pray, Lord, that uh, somebody here is listening. I pray that uh, you take to heart some of the things I said, not just about the fishing, but about God as well. So guys, until next time, always, always remember, God loves you more than you could ever know. Remember to get outdoors, and God bless you.